It's another Thursday, and I'm so glad you could join us for this installment of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. On the show today, the Office of the Information Commissioner takes us through the registration process for data controllers, plus understanding how storms and hurricanes are monitored to give accurate information. There is more, so keep watching. What can a little germs do? Pink eye running, belly even flu. Germs can make them happen to you. Put germs on a man as with these. Cover your mouth when you cough and sneeze. Always wash your hand with water and soap. Keep dirty hands from your eyes and your nose and your mouth. You don't want to be sick, take care. Practice every day, no germs down here. A message from the Ministry of Health. Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your JIS News for Thursday, June 13, 2024. The government is now positioned to take an important step towards the promised establishment of a national unemployment insurance program after receiving a $20 million US dollar loan from the World Bank. The loan agreement for the Social Protection for Increased Resilience and Opportunity Spiro project was signed on Tuesday. The Spiro project aims to increase Jamaica's social protection coverage through the unemployment insurance program and strengthening of the social protection delivery system. At the signing, Minister of Finance and the Public Service Dr. Nigel Clark said the government was focused on improving the social safety net and providing for the most vulnerable members of society. Spiro, which will be executed by the Ministry of Labor and Social Security over a six-year period ending January 2030, comprises five components. These include the implementation of the National Unemployment Insurance Fund, strengthening of employment services, and implementation of information systems. The Constitution Reform Committee CRC has proposed that there should be no inclusion of an impeachment process in the reformed Constitution. Minister of Legal and Constitutional Affairs Marlene Malahu Fort made the revelation during her contribution to the sectoral debate in Parliament Tuesday. The reasons are that it is essentially dealing with what is a legal matter through a political process as most impeachable offenses are criminal in nature and pro properly triable in the courts. This decision comes amid demands for increased accountability among parliamentarians, with the CRC opting not to incorporate impeachment or recall mechanisms into the proposed constitutional reforms. We consider that the process can be easily manipulated for partisan political purposes, that it is difficult to ensure an impartial hearing by members of a parliament that is divided along partisan political lines. The need for investigative resources and whether matter being investigated involves the allegation of a crime, then the normal criminal proceedings would be invoked, which creates the risk of competing and conflicting jurisdictions and outcomes. The Upper House of Parliament has approved the Trademark Amendment Rules 2024, which set out new procedures for signing and filing for the international registration of trademarks. The trademark rules were last amended in 2022 to provide for the local administration of the international registration of trademarks. It sets out the criteria and application procedure, as well as administration fees, among other things. Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Senator Aubin Hill, says the current changes address two concerns highlighted by the Intellectual Property Committee of the Jamaica Bar Association. These relate to the filing of Form TM3 to make a request to appoint or change an agent or to enter or change an address for service. The ministry agreed that the rules would be amended to, one, allow trademark agents to sign the form TM3 on behalf of the uh, proprietor uh, where there is a personal authorization letter executed by the proprietor and witnessed by a justice of the peace or a notary public, and two, provide that the form TM3 
is to be submitted within four weeks of the filing of the application to register a trademark. That's Form TM1. The Trademark Amendment Rules 2024 were promulgated in keeping with Section 78 of the Trademark Act. The zones of special operations ZOSO in four parishes have been extended for another 60 days. The security measures were approved in the lower house on Tuesday. The extension takes effect in the communities of Denham Town, Parried Gardens, August Town, Greenwich Town, Mount Salem, Norwood and in Savannah Lamar. Minister of National Security Dr. Horace Chang says progress has been made in these areas and work will continue to achieve the desired results. We remain confident that the zones of special operations are indeed transformative in their concept in these committees and the lives of the residents have in fact been impacted significantly. As we advance the work of the zones, the government will expand partnership with our bilateral and multilateral partners to further support critical areas for intervention within the city security plan in these zones. Dr. Chang emphasizes that social vulnerability is directly linked to criminal violence and as such, high priority is being placed on addressing the needs of the communities and steering the youth away from a life of crime. The Jamaica Defense Force JDF is leading joint training operations with other CARICOM countries in anticipation of deployment to Haiti to help restore peace. According to a statement from the Ministry of National Security, the multinational security support led by Kenya is in an advanced state of readiness with the JDF and the Jamaica Constabulary Force having organized teams. While the government continues to collaborate with regional and international partners to sustainably address the social and political challenges in Haiti, the ministry says it continues to review the immigration applications made by Haitians who have arrived in Jamaica since the conflict intensified. Among them are 37 Haitian migrants who arrived illegally on the island on July 10, 2023. The National Security Ministry says it worked with other government ministries, departments and agencies to facilitate the movement of the Haitian migrants to a new location between June 8 and 11 this year. This move was necessary to return the property temporarily provided by the Northeast Jamaica Conference of the Seventh-day Adventists. Following the collapse of the Haitian government and the resignation of former Prime Minister Ariel Henry, the Security Ministry has been developing a temporary humanitarian stay option for Haitian nationals already in Jamaica. This option is contingent upon successful background checks, security screenings, and meeting other prescribed requirements. Between July 2023 and May 2024, there were five recorded arrivals of illegal Haitian migrants in Jamaica. While some have sought asylum and are being processed under the refugee policy, approximately 80 have been repatriated and 22 remain in police custody pending ongoing court proceedings. And finally, Minister of Labor and Social Security Pernell Charles Jr. is urging parents to monitor their children when accessing the internet on their devices. The minister, who is also Member of Parliament for Southeastern Clarendon, was addressing the recent launch of a free Wi-Fi hotspot in Freetown in the parish. With every great access comes great responsibility. And so we have to ensure that as community members, we utilize the Wi-Fi for good and that we protect our children by monitoring them and supervising them. He adds that parents should not just give their children the devices, but also the tools and knowledge on how to use them and doing so safely. As parents and guardians, brothers and sisters, adults, that we ensure that the equipment that is used by our children is equipment with the tools to protect our children. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. The following is brought to you by the Office of the Prime Minister. Freedom and the use of violence is incompatible. There is no freedom where violence exists. I invite all Jamaicans to reflect on this. We must all make a concerted effort to reject violence in our daily lives.
The proceeding was brought to you by the Office of the Prime Minister. We are in the hurricane season with predictions of above normal activities. Throughout the period, June to November, the National Hurricane Center uses an array of instruments to predict, confirm, and advise about developments within the Atlantic Basin. Take a look. Hurricane Matthew is still a Category 4 hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale. It is continuing to move northward, which takes it closer and closer to Jamaican waters. More information is coming out from the Hurricane Center. The Atlantic hurricane season runs from June 1 through to November 30. These dates historically describe the period when most tropical cyclones form in the Atlantic Basin. A number of tools are used, like satellites, radars, and computer models, to determine where a hurricane will go and how intense it will be. But a critical part of forecasting is done by the specially equipped NOHA aircrafts called Hurricane Hunters, which collect data through high-flying meteorological stations. That will be transmitted back to the, the Hurricane Center and then made available to all the region, all the, including Jamaica. WC-130J, Hercules, is a high-wing medium-range aircraft used in weather reconnaissance missions. This plane is configured to penetrate tropical disturbances and storms, as well as hurricanes and winter storms, and get data on the movement, size, and intensity of these systems. The NOHA Gulfstream model, nicknamed Gonzo, is a high-tech, high-flying, and high-speed twin-engine jet that flies around and over developing tropical cyclones to create a detailed picture of the surrounding upper atmosphere. It has a range of nearly 4,000 nautical miles and a cruising altitude of 45,000 feet. The Lockheed model, nicknamed Kermit, is in a class by itself. Formulated with unique scientific instrumentation, radars, and recording systems, the Kermit is able to do horizontal and vertical scans of storms. So we'll have two uh, meteorologists yes. sit up front there. Yes. Uh, the person in the left seat is usually verifying the drops on data that we're uh, collecting. The person on the right is helping with navigation. Uh, the station behind that is where uh, our radar operator sits. So we've got a radar in the nose and a radar in the tail uh, collecting data for us. This is uh, where all of our data systems uh, reside. And then back here is where we're actually dropping the songs. So uh, we'll uh, prepare one of the songs here, mm -hmm. pass it over to that guy. He'll prepare it there just so we have a backup just in case this yes, computer goes yes, dead or that yes. computer goes dead. Yes. Uh, once the song is ready to go, close the door. Cutting through the eye wall of a hurricane, lashed by extreme winds, dazzling rain and fierce updrafts and downdrafts before entering the calm of the storm, probing every wind and pressure change during the course of 8 to 10 hours. So why aren't these aircraft torn apart during these flights? Well, they are generally not destroyed by strong winds while in flight. It's the sheer or sudden change in horizontal or vertical winds that can destroy an aircraft or cause its loss of control. That's why NOHA Hurricane Hunter aircraft don't fly through tornadoes, but they are always monitoring for hot spots of severe weather and shear that they can often identify on radar and avoid if it's too severe. We are always in direct communication with the National Hurricane Center. As soon as they get the information, we speak to them, they tell us what is happening. And so when we are ready to issue a warning, if we feel that we are threatened, we communicate that to the Hurricane Center. We are ready to issue a warning. What do you think? And we take that decision and they make it public to all the countries, not only in the region, but even wider than that through the internet and other means. 
Jamaicans practice proper disposal of garbage and if items can be reused, recycle them. We all have a part to play in protecting our environment from pollution. We are building Jamaica. With the onset of climate change, weather patterns have become unstable. The heat has intensified and dry times have increased. The effects have produced bouts of bushfires and high demand of our limited water resources. So as we approach the summer period, remember not to light campfires, slash and burn or throw away lit cigarettes. Unplanned fires that burn in natural areas such as forests, grasslands and savannas are called bushfires. They are usually caused by human activities done in error. In Jamaica, individuals burning garbage or clearing fields, farmers burning land for replanting, and individuals throwing away lit cigarettes are all actions that can cause bushfires. Natural occurrences such as a lightning can also cause bushfires. This happens when lightning strikes and ignites dry trees and bushes. Bushfires can have deleterious or harmful effects on the natural environment. Managing Director of the Water Resources Authority, Peter Clark, wants citizens to pay keen attention to habits that can cause bushfires and be more proactive. One of the effects of bushfires is soil erosion. When burnt material from fires infiltrate the soil and form a waxy layer, this makes it difficult for water to infiltrate the ground during rainfall. Similarly, when the roots of plants burn, they can no longer hold soil particles in place. Bushfires also cause harm to the country's watersheds and have a negative impact on water resources. This continues the vicious cycle of water shortage. So that when we are gathering water, we then have to probably not take that, that initial water um, into reservoirs because it, the, the sediment level is so high. This is created by the conditions that the bushfires would have set up. And so it leads to increased treatment costs. It leads to diversion of water that could have been collected for time in, as we are now in need of water that could have been collected, but it has to be diverted because the erosion and the sediment is, is so high. Bushfires also cause the depletion of stored water in facilities like the Mona Reservoir when the precious liquid is used for dampening blazes. The Jamaica Fire Brigade had to call on the Jamaica Defence Force who had to use its helicopter and to pull gallons of water dipping bucket into the Mona Reservoir to hold bushfire. Now that I understand is almost a thousand buckets of water was removed from the Mona Reservoir to put out bushfire. A December 2022 report from the Meteorological Service of Jamaica showed that all parishes were experiencing rainfall levels below their respective 30-year averages. Kingston and St. Andrew recorded a mere 5% of their average rainfall. Since the start of this year, the country has been experiencing a meteorological drought. The fact that it is a meteorological drought means that right now, the rivers that are served largely by in almost instantaneous rainfall. The rivers that are emanating and being sourced from areas that are of the volcanic rocks are being impacted. Mr. Clark says rivers in the Blue Mountains and the Wandebolas Mountain are being affected. This has resulted in certain water sources being impacted. And that's why an increase in bushfires is worrying for the Water Resources Authority. There must be concern when water that has been abstracted and gathered for domestic purposes is being used to out bushfires. We have a very serious and strong concern about that. To minimize the risks and ensure that precious resources are used for their intended purpose, it is important that citizens do not carelessly light and leave fires unattended. The Office of the Information Commissioner, OIC, is now in the process of registering data controllers. This is part of the enactment process for the Data Protection Act. Here's a guide from the OIC.
Welcome to Get the Facts, the show that gives you information on the latest topics. The Office of the Information Commissioner, OIC, commenced the registration of data controllers in several categories as of June 1st. Priorities being given to ministries, departments, and agencies within the government and other entities where data controllers have high risk when it comes to personal information. These include finance, health, education, tourism, and information and communication technology, ICT services. Speaking last month, the Minister with Responsibility for Information, Skills, and Digital Transformation, Senator Dr. Dana Morris Dixon, stressed that the Data Protection Act applied to all businesses, notwithstanding their size. With me to discuss some key factors under the Data Protection Act is Ms. Celia Barclay, Information Commissioner, and Mr. Ronald Frew, Information Systems Manager, both in the Office of the Information Commissioner. Welcome to you both. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Thank you. All right, let's jump right into getting the facts. Now, I know it's something that everybody should know about already, but just very briefly, tell us, what is the Data Protection Act? The Data Protection Act is a law that was passed in 2020 to ensure that persons' personal data in the hands of third parties right. is properly protected. And so it provides for certain obligations on the parts of data controllers who process that information, mm -hmm. as well as for certain rights for data subjects to whom the information relates. Ah, I see. So I'd love to ask a little bit about that. Data controllers, once they have, once any data comes to them that can personally identify me, that qualifies them as a data controller. Yes. If you hold the information that relates to other persons and you determine the way in which that information is processed and the purposes for which it is processed, right. and that information is information that can be used to identify the individual or based on which you would hold certain opinions or make decisions relating to the individual, then essentially what the law is saying is that you have a responsibility to ensure that you properly protect that information while it is under your possession and control. Ah, all right. Let's get some more facts. Now, stakeholders were given, last time we spoke, stakeholders were given six months to comply, you know, get uh, your data up to speed, get registered. What have you seen in terms of compliance? All right. So the six-month extension period was an extension from December 1, 2023, yes. when most of the sections of the Act came into force, including the provision that speaks to the requirement of data controllers to register with our office. Right. During that six months period, data controllers were allowed time to prepare for compliance with all their obligations under the Act, mm -hmm. of which registration with the Information Commissioner is just one. Right. So it is one of the main requirements for compliance, but it is not the only compliance. Understood. During that six months period, what we have seen is increased interest and activity towards compliance. So we know based on the communication we have received that persons have been taking steps to get ready and there has been a movement towards preparing for registration in the form of creating their data controller accounts on our website. Oh, I see. Mr. Fru, let's talk some numbers. Uh, what we're seeing in terms of accounts creation, calls coming in, I assume there are a lot. Right, so since Saturday, um, it has been crazy. So we're looking at numbers such as like as at today, 2000. 100 controllers accounts have been created on the YC platform. Oh. 300, over 300 persons have already started um, submitting mm -hmm. or entering information, registration particulars in right. the form that is on the YC's platform. And over 33 persons have already submitted that as in they complete the entire process in terms of oh. entering the registration particulars, yeah. pay the fee and make submission of those completed registration form. So on that note, let's go through the registration process then for those who are you know, still lagging a little mm -hmm. behind. How do I register? All right, so first of all, persons need to know that there's only one way and one place to register as a data controller. Oh, no. It must be done on the website of the OIC. I can't which come is in? OIC.gov.jm. 
we are trying to move towards the digital economy right. that Jamaica wants to create. Yes. And so we aim to make this process as simple and easy as possible to have our business functions automated and to ensure that our records are kept in electronic form. And so for that reason, it is an online application that must be made. So data controllers wishing to register, visit the OIC's website, yes. click on the My OIC portal, and on that portal, they will first be required to create an account. Right. Once that account is created and verified by the OIC through an email, mm -hmm. they can use the access credentials that are provided to enter back the portal and then have access to the registration form where they can input their registration particulars. Portal first, portal account first, then registration process. Yes. And it doesn't matter whether my data, the data I control is digital or not. I'm a data controller, I need to register online. Right. Got it, got it. Mr. Fru, I wanted to pull you into this one. Uh, costs? So mm -hmm. for companies and public authorities, the right. registration fee for first-time registrants, right. which are all the persons registering now, right. would be $25,000. Okay. For the sole trader, proprietor, practitioner, or any individual who would also qualify as a data controller under the Act, mm -hmm. then it is $7,500. And then for all other controllers, which are labeled as partnerships, but may operate in some other business structure, the fee is $15,000. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. All right. So I I, I really wanted to ask a technical question, uh, Mr. Fru, so let me do that again. Does, do I need a special program or device to use the form or register? Right, so I'm happy that you asked that question because it's something that we had to be, I've been dealing with it over the past couple of months, persons registering. Now, we understand at OIC that persons will employ the services of, say, for example, data protection practitioners mm. who might use programs or software to gather information on behalf of the data controller. Right. Over while that is beneficial to controllers and we understand the need to do that in order for, for you to complete the registration process or to um, add information, registration particulars to the OIC form, you're still required to do it manual. No. Ah. So you have manual in terms of you entering that information into the form using the My OIC portal. Right. No, I just want persons to bear in mind that what the information that OIC require are general information at this point about your practices, your processing activities mm -hmm. that you need to enter in the form which is prescribed by law that can be found in section 16. Ah. So even though they collect information, more information that is required, um, there will be no integration with any third party application with the OIC platform. So in layman's parlance, they have to type it in. You have to, yeah, well, right. You have and, to. And, and just before we go to the break, just answer me this very quickly. So for those who have to gather this information and can't complete the form in one sitting, I can save what I've done before? Yes, so we thought about that and we give, we are giving persons the ability 30 days to complete the application form. Okay. So during that process, you have the ability to save what you're doing in draft mode right. and then complete the form. The Joint Select Committee of Parliament reviewing the Domestic Violence Act wants to hear from you. Review the Act and share your opinions with the committee. You can find a copy of the Act on the Parliament's website at www.japarliament.gov.jm under the heading Publications. Once you've reviewed the Act, submit your written opinions by Friday, June 14, 2024 to Clark to the Houses, Gordon House, 81 Duke Street, Kingston, or email them at clark at japarliament.gov.jm. Let your voice be heard. This is where our journey ends, but only for today. Do join us again tomorrow when we'll bring another informative program. In the meantime, stay connected via our website, gis.gov.jm. And while you're online, send your feedback to Jamaica Magazine at gis.gov.jm or via X at GIS News. You may also find us on all the major social media platforms and through our mobile app that's Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care.
This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.